In total, I spent two years undercover in a range of different movements from jihadist groups, um, ISIS hacking groups, for example, and jihadist bride groups, to conspiracy theory networks, to misogynist um, groups, and also white nationalist and neo-Nazi groups. Where I could really see a pattern across all of these movements when joining them, both online and offline, was that they use a very strategically formulated script almost of radicalizing new members. So usually it follows kind of six stages across uh, the radicalization process. So, that, so it started with obviously with recruiting new members, then a huge part of that radicalization process was not really the ideological indoctrination, but really the socialization, the creation of, of countercultures, of almost of in-group references, in insider jokes, they almost create their own language in each of those groups that I joined. Networking, we of course see an increasingly global community of people from fringe communities on a local level joining forces on a global scale to have an influence on politics or plan uh, intimidation campaigns. This leads to the next stage. They run very sophisticated um, kind of slick communication campaigns across the entire spectrum of um, online platforms that we're seeing, from the bigger platforms to the more fringe. They also often then mobilize to real-world protests or to, uh, to bigger campaigns that they run online. Unfortunately, we've seen a range of also violent protests happening in the last few years, from the Charlottesville rally, which led to the death of a counter-protester. And then, in the end, there is unfortunately also often the last stage, which is attacks uh, that can come either in the form of hacking attacks, again, using online tools um, and exploiting the vulnerabilities uh, that new technology have given rise to, or actually inspiring real-world attacks. And one of the first um, groups that I joined and where the recruiting process was actually quite interesting is the white nationalist pan-European group Generation Identity that spreads especially the conspiracy theory of the Great Replacement. They are a very young movement, so they're also very selective with the recruitment. And it was interesting that they had very standardized procedures for everything. Of course, with all of these kind of online identities that I built up, there was um, a big question around how do I create a credible profile that also allows me to then potentially join these movements. And for, for this particular movement, I knew that they were setting up their UK and Ireland branch in London and I wanted to know what their next steps would be, what kind of campaigns they were planning to do. So I, I reached out to them after already having joined various online groups, having had conversations with members purely online, to then also meet them offline. And I went through several interviews um, with their, their recruiters and their, their leading members from uh, Austria and also the UK branch. And then they invited me to their strategy meeting. And what I found really uh, quite shocking was the degree of, of kind of standardized branding that they had adopted to all of their outlets across Europe and how strategic they were about tapping into, into local grievances with this universal branding strategy, highly professional, sometimes even using marketing uh, studies or even academic studies on how to best communicate their extreme ideologies to bigger audiences but then also tapping into different subcultures and tailor their communication campaigns to really reach out to new audiences. And this was something they talked about in the strategy meeting where one of their uh, most influential figures in Europe, Martin Selner, was also present. He is the one on the picture. He even gave us a briefing on how to, essentially how to respond, for example, to tricky questions from journalists. For example, are you anti-Semitic or are you racist? and also how to run these slick online offline campaigns. Another example of a group that is very skillful in also running really slick online campaigns and influencing even the political discourse is the neo-Nazi trolling army Reconquista Germanica. It's a German neo-Nazi group on the gaming application Discord and it's only one out of many. There are also British uh, trolling armies. They're uh, pretty much trolling armies and sometimes ideologically influenced far right or uh, of other ideological backgrounds, groups that try to either um, launch big harassment campaigns, hate campaigns against their political enemies, or um, launch political influence or disinformation campaigns. They at a certain stage had 10,000 of members who were coordinating in this closed gaming uh, chat application to then attack political accounts on Twitter or to run bigger campaigns to 
hijack hashtags, for example. The whole, the whole process of setting up a, a kind of structure that would be appealing to, to new members who might not even have an interest in the political side of it, but really by, by for example, giving them incentive um, structures. They almost had a military-like system where you could be promoted to a higher rank if you um, did a good job in, in carrying out, for example, a campaign against, uh, against a politician or against a journalist that reported critically about the far-right party in Germany, about the AfD. And their whole goal was to influence um, the political discourse, which they managed to do in the run-up to the last German elections. Their hashtags were in the top 10 Twitter trends in Germany for two weeks. And that was quite telling of how much influence they can have. Another um, case of quite an organized kind of communication campaign, again, with the goal of intimidating journalists, was one that I faced myself when Tommy Robinson, the founder of the English Defense League, came to my previous office. I was working at Quilliam back then and had published an article in The Guardian that explicitly mentioned Tommy Robinson. And he then stormed the office and live streamed everything to his back then 300,000 followers on Twitter, which kicked off a big hate campaign against me and the organization. And it eventually also led to me being uh, dismissed by the organization. So you could see what kind of power um, individuals can have over an entire organization. And that was quite, um, yeah, quite shocking as an experience to see how much leverage they can have.